The guitar is basically a vehicle to be able to express feelings of anxiety, feelings of anger, feelings of passion, feelings of love, feelings of excitement, feelings of, of violence, feelings of sex. I mean, it's all these different kind of emotions are, for me, very well expressed through the guitar. If it was something that I really wanted to talk about or yell about or scream about or whisper about or whatever, it's easier for me to do it with a guitar than it is to do it you know, through the spoken word, you know. The guitar for me definitely is sort of a comfort zone. You know, just as an example, the idea of standing on a stage without one, let's say I was going to be a lead singer or something, is unfathomable. The guitar it becomes such a sort of an extension of what I'm all about that I feel more secure with it, you know, if not in my lap or hanging off my shoulders, at least having it in the room, you know. <laughs> I first discovered guitar when I was a kid in England. Guitar was the centerpiece, it was the main focus for rock and roll, which was something I was weaned on. My dad was a big rock and roll fan, and his brothers, my uncles, were all very, very serious rock and roll aficionados. It was, you know, it was late 60s England, and my dad and his brothers were just really, really serious. British rock and roll fans, and so, you know, that wasn't really my introduction to the guitar. When I first started playing guitar, it was just about the guys whose music really appealed to me the most. It wasn't so much about guitar heroes and, and, you know, sort of like the pyrotechnics of playing guitar. It was just sort of the whole package, just really good music and accompaniment that really expressed whatever the song was. When I first put together sort of a, a, a blues lick, that was a, an elation. It was like, uh, I just, stumbled on the key to everlasting life or something, you know, it was like, wow, you know. I come from a sort of illustration background anyway, and my Parents were both art artists, and my grandparents were artists. And I mean, that's really the only thing I was good at before I could play guitar. You know, when I was a little kid and going to art galleries and whatnot, you know, I was into uh, Matisse and Picasso, and those were two artists that really appealed to me. And then there was David Hockney and all, you know, and, and Escher, and there was all these sort of very stylistic graphic artists that I thought were really great. So that kind of stuff has always really appealed to me. And then I remember seeing Fantasia in England when I was a little kid and having the power of really majestic animation with really powerful classical music and having that, that combination was something that was really inspiring to me without even knowing why or what it was inspiring. I love horror, I love horror visuals, you know, but more the the old school sort of monsters and creatures and things like that. So that's something that I keep around a lot, you know. And ever since I was a little kid, always been a huge fan of dinosaurs. So that's something I still 
I'm very much inspired by and, and keeping up with and so on. So there's a lot of different things that, you know, I've always liked that I just sort of are part of my makeup that really don't necessarily have anything to do with the guitar. Although, because it's all sort of artistic, it's all sort of relatable. <laughs> The backstory to Living a Dream is, see, I guess in 2015, when the conspirators got off the road, I went straight into a rehearsal space and started compiling some of the ideas that I had come up with on the road. Basically, the first sort of phase of pre-production. And so we had compiled a bunch of material, and then I ended up joining up with Guns N' Roses, which was something that had, wasn't wasn't foreseen. You know. So for a year and a half I was out with guns and Conspirators was basically on the back burner for that whole period of time. But when we got back together, I wanted to complete what we'd set out to do back in 2015. So come January of 2018, got everybody together in the Conspirators and went in and sort of went back and revisited all that material from before and then created about I don't know, three or four new songs. And then we started pre-production all over again and then made the record. <laughs> I don't know why the guitar in and of itself is important to the world other than the fact that, you know, I mean really, not to sound cliche or anything, but rock and roll came around and guitar was the centerpiece for that and it's been obviously very inspiring and it sort of created a sound. It's hard to really talk about rock and roll without thinking of guitar. There's definitely artists who have been really, really influential and socially influential and even politically influential. And guitars were their instrument of choice. I don't think the guitar standing on, on in a stand in a room really says anything about anything, but it depends on who picks it up and what that person has to say. <laughs> I think the guitar has been really almost the only part of me that's been able to traverse all the different experiences that I've had in the last 35 years or whatever, in all the places that I've been. That's it's really sort of the thing that I've been doing that's allowed me to do all that, to meet a lot of really interesting and, and influential people. It's been the thing that's sort of put me in somewhat of a spotlight, you know, and to be able to enjoy what it is that I do, you know. I don't know what I would be doing if I hadn't picked up on that, you know. I doubt I wouldn't be still BMXing. <laughs>